It's not necessarily that they're ignoring it. They, let's give them credit and be kind to them and say they haven't been educated yet. So what the job of people who know is to educate people who don't know. And that's obviously why we're having this conference. And I think it's very important for politicians and people in control, law enforcement, etc., to understand that there's something very special about marijuana that's different from all others. And it really should not be considered a drug. It should be considered a food. Because when we don't have proper nutrition, we have consequences. And what has been clearly shown is that too little marijuana shortens your life. Too little marijuana-like activity shortens your life. And consuming excess of it increases your lifespan and decreases a variety of illnesses such as tuberculosis. So here we have an opportunity now that we understand what we didn't used to know. Nobody knew there was an endocannabinoid system until 1988. And it wasn't until the next decade, over the next decade, that the scientific foundation was laid for the expansion and the, really the explosion that has occurred over the past few years now that we understand that uh, the endocannabinoid system regulates everything in our body from conception till death, and therefore, by manipulating it, we can either promote or decrease health. And it turns out that we need more, not less. So uh, it's essentially, in my view, an essential nutrient. Because if you're going to die prematurely without it, and you're going to live longer with it, that says we have a nutritional deficiency. and that these chemicals aid our health. And there's very significant data that shows anti-aging, anti-cancer, and in fact, by virtue of being an anti-aging drug, it inhibits all age-related illnesses. So we can view cannabis and our endocannabinoid system, which it impacts on, as uh, really lubrication for life so that we live longer and healthier because the electron flow within us is happening in a healthier way that produces less free radicals, which are the basis of aging and inflammation. So the politicians have to understand that what I'm just telling you is absolutely true. It's not going to ever go away. This is reality, and now science has discovered this reality. And we, we can't erase the truth. So what they can do is learn the truth, and then actually try to help the citizens by understanding how special this plant is because of its ability, unique ability, to really tap into how our bodies work in, a, in this special way. So politicians are going to have to learn sooner, hopefully, than later because in the end, cannabis will be available to people everywhere in the world because of its unique, special medical value. And the politicians can either learn sooner or continue to harm and kill people who they're supposed to be helping. Mm -hmm. So wake up. What do you think that marijuana can teach us? Well, again, the endocannabinoid system came into play with the evolutionary emergence of vertebrates. So all of the invertebrates, the insects, the lobsters, you know, and, and other simple organisms do not have cannabinoid receptors, and one of the cannabinoid receptors known as CB1 is the one that has the psychoactivity. But just yesterday I read a paper that showed if you don't have enough of CB1 activity, it promotes colon cancer. So at this point in time where healthcare costs are exploding, where people are looking for solutions, and where it's well documented, at least in America, that one of the leading causes of death is to use pharmaceutical medicines as prescribed. 100,000 people in America die every year using the medicine that the doctors prescribe to them and using it in the fashion prescribed. So there is certainly value to a lot of pharmaceuticals and others become a lot more questionable. And that's particularly true when you're dealing with cancer, where there's a $150 billion industry that largely fails you know, or give somebody an extra two months for $50,000. This is unsustainable and it's stupid, especially when we can grow a plant that not only has the ability to cure for many people many different kinds of cancers, but today we know that we can control 
certain viral cancers, like herpes-induced Carposi sarcoma, which is one of the uh, AIDS-related illnesses. But furthermore, when we control that with cannabis, we wind up also, as a side effect, controlling HIV. So unlike conventional medicines where the side effects are negative, here we have something where the side effects are positive. We can completely control HIV with high doses of cannabis without using any antiretrovirals and having people infinitely healthier than they were with the antiretrovirals, which have numerous horrible side effects. And Carposi, for example, is the leading cause, leading cancer in Africa. And they don't treat it at all. The people are just left to suffer horrible deaths when all they need to do is start planting some cannabis. 100 million kilos of cannabis grown in the continent of Africa will change the continent of Africa forever in a positive, healthy way. And things are moving in that direction. And as the world, as the, the truth continues to spread and the health benefits become more obvious to everyone, uh, this insanity will end. So politicians, help your people now. Don't make them suffer pain and death unnecessarily. Thank you.